Hello, hello everyone. Are you ready to tune into your business, stay connected with your vision, and start showing up more confidently here online and specifically on camera? If so, then you want to stick around because today we have a special guest here on Ed Talk TV. So let's get into it. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Ed Talk TV, conversations worth having. I'm your host, Ed Troxel. And if you're new around here, let me do a quick introduction before we hop into today's topic with our special guest. Uh, for those who are new, welcome. We love to engage down below. So make sure, even if you're watching the replay, that you say hello because I want to see you. And so does everyone else who is browsing the comments because let's face it, you're all browsing the comments. I know, I see you, I see you. Uh, and if this is your first time tuning in, I am a Facebook Live producer. What does that mean? That means that I help businesses create original content through Facebook Live. That's just our starting point where we can leverage live broadcasting so that you can get content, get seen, and start getting results in your business. You can always message me for more details and there'll be uh, a link in the description uh, as well. So. That's a little bit about me, and today we have a special guest here on the show. We like to do our live show at least once a week where we can have conversations around business and just really um, us as business owners and the, the tech and just things that we go through. So I'm excited today to have a special guest who I am going to bring on screen right now so she can introduce herself. So give me one second, and boom! I love when technology works like that. Trisha, you're live. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I loved the introduction and how you've got everything in your intro is awesome. Isn't that um, fun? It's like, yeah. it, it's a lot of fun. And, and for those watching, even if you're watching the replay, know that that's not where I started. Okay. We, we all have to start somewhere. Right. And, and this is, this is where I started just the phone and, and tech. And that's where I want you guys to start, especially if you haven't yet. And then you work your way up to these levels and then you can start really having a lot of fun with, with your show. So I appreciate that feedback. Um, so introduce yourself, let people know who you are, uh, because you're, you're new here on the show. Thank you. I am Trisha Dyka of The Happy Empath, and today we will be talking about how empaths overcome emotional overwhelm, how they can tr really put this into their businesses, how they can push their businesses forward, how this is such a great way to really be visible and show up and share on video, because I got to tell you, I love video. Isn't it amazing? And let me ask you, what do you love about uh, video specifically for you? Um, I got, I'm going to share a story with you about, yeah. God, maybe 12 years ago, I was, I did my first video and I remember like freaking out, actually physically felt like I was going to be sick because I've never done video and I, you know, tortured myself about getting on video. Yeah, but um, I love it. I love getting on. I love sharing stories. I love people actually can see me and they could see me sharing. And you really have a connection when you're seeing somebody face to face. So, um, oh, it's so true. So true. Jennifer on Facebook says, oh, my goodness, this is for me. Empath in dash house. Yes. Point to self. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And, and that is the beauty of video, specifically live video, is that you get to be there face to face with whoever it is you're talking to, or in this case, talking with. And it just, it's, it's a powerful thing for businesses to leverage because it's the next best thing to being in person with, with someone. Yes. Yeah. So, and that's what makes the world so much smaller now is you're, you're really actually connecting so much more with people. Yeah. So it's really, um, 
I, I really do enjoy it. And when the first time I did video and as with everybody else, you get nervous, you get sick, <laughs> and just do it again and you do it again and you do it again. And you end up to a point where you have the confidence just to get on and share and be yourself. And as you can see, I'm one of those people that talk with their hands. So, you know, it's, it's part of me. It's part of who I am. And I love the ability to share all of that. Believe it or not. It's just, you know. Oh yeah. It's amazing. And it does wonders for, for you personally, professionally, and for everyone else who is tuning into your broadcasts, which is such a powerful thing that we don't even know how many people were changing, how many lives were changing just from going live. Like that, that's what like just sparks interest for me by itself. Um, for it. And so with what you do, let's start at the beginning and kind of just share who is an empath or what is an empath? Because some people may not know that term or know that that's them. Yeah. Um, who An empath is somebody who feels things very, on, a, on a very deep level. They're feeling e emotions. They're feeling physical issues. They're feeling mental issues. It is somebody who actually takes it on and makes it their own if they don't understand what an empath is or that they are one. For for years, I did not know. Maybe it was about 10 years ago that I realized I was an empath. So I would take things on and I would literally some days go through this tremendous roller coaster ride of feeling so many emotions. Yeah that I would start with happiness. I would go to anxiety. I would go to sadness. I would go to depression. I would go back to joy. It would be like, there were some days I would be so exhausted at the end of the day. I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait to go to bed. And then realizing that I was an empath and taking on so many emotions that I needed to figure out easy and effortless tools to, to actually learn my own energy, learn how to handle this gift. And when I say gift, 10 years ago, I did not think it was a gift. <laughs> you know, now, I, now I do, but that also comes with understanding who you are, honoring who you are, moving forward with who you are. So if you're an empath and you're picking up, like for example, there are so many collective issues right now, like the fires in Australia, that you're picking up this tremendous sadness and fear and terror that you'll wake up in the middle of the night and be like, oh, my God, I don't understand why I've got this going on. And an easy way to learn what's not yours is something that I created. And this is something I I share with my business owners and I invite them to do because as they're handling clients day in and day out, yeah. they end up picking up emotions oh, and goodness. yeah, obstacles and their challenges. And they may realize it, but they don't know how to handle it or they're going through, they're being depleted during the day and they're not really sure if it's theirs or if it's not easy, easy tool is something I call the empath symbol. And mine is a bear. I just happen to like large animals, but you can have instruments, you can have places, you can have colors, flowers, anything that you want. And just ask the universe to show you your symbol when what you're feeling does not belong to you. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So that's all, all you need to do is pick, pick a symbol and then when you're feeling some sort of way that you're just not sure of, ask the universe to just point that symbol out to you? Yes. Well, what I do is in the morning, I'll set the symbol up per se. I'll, I'll say to the universe, okay, anytime that I'm picking up something that does not belong to me, please show me my bear. Yeah. And when I first started to learn this, I saw this bear 90 percent of the time. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> um, a, an example was we went to Best Buy one night. This is 10 years ago. And I walked in and my husband could see I was, 
acting a little funny and and I was actually getting very anxious and on every single TV was a bear. No kidding. Yep. Wow. <laughs> I, but but it, it, that makes sense though, you know, when you think about it, um, because when we as business owners put things out into the universe, when, when we really stop and think about what are we telling ourselves? What's that self-talk? What's that, um, what are we trying to envision for our, our lifestyle, for our business? And, and where do we see ourselves going with everything? We're putting those messages out into the universe. And so it makes sense to now pick something that represents that like North star, I guess. Yeah. To bring you back to what you need to find in order to keep things in alignment for you and your business. Yeah. Yeah. Because when I didn't, when I, when everything blew up and, and my gifts kind of really got out of control, yeah. um, I shied away from taking on clients. I shied away from being in the public eye. I didn't want to do video. I t forget video, you know, yeah. it was like, I didn't want to do anything. And I had a hard time with understanding. And it took me, it took me a while to really honor myself as a person. Like that's really big as business owners is honoring ourselves as people. Oh yeah. It's, it's huge. I don't know if any of you guys can relate those who are watching the replay as well, but that is something that I think every business owner can relate to is that we are constantly working on everything else and everyone else but ourselves. And we're feeling that emotional roller coaster all the time. And we don't really pay attention to the signs. And, and so I love what you're saying here is that we're able to identify a sign, just like when we want to make something happen, we set our goals and writing them down helps, helps us stick to those. This for me is that kind of thing too, is okay. I'm making a note that this is the symbol that I'm looking for to make sure that when I see it, something goes off and it's like, okay, we, we got to pay attention here. Yeah. We got to pay attention to what's going on. We've got to pay it. we got to be present again because yeah. as business owners, we're going and we're going and we're so busy in so many different directions that we end up getting caught up in the busyness of life. And when we do that, we end up taking more on and we're not even aware that we are until it's like crash, bam. Yeah. <laughs> now we've got to figure out what happened, why did it happen, and why are we so depleted? So for me, one of the things that I like to do is constantly come back into my body, constantly be like, all right, am I being present or am I rushing my day? Am I being present? Am I aware of what I'm doing? Or am I just going through the motion? It's those times that I actually am saying, all right, I'm going through the motions and I'm rushing and I'm running and I got this and I've got this and I've got that. And what we don't realize is if we slow that roll, we can get more done. Yes. It's yeah. so true. And I will tell you guys, I experience this often because I really do try to stay in tune with things and, and I really try to protect my schedule as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And one one of the things that I actually tried last week uh, was the 20 minute on and off thing. Um, I forget the, I think it's part of the, you guys are going to laugh at me, but I think it's like the, it's not pomegranate thing, but it's some like time management thing that starts with a P it's pomo something. Anyway, um, I, I tried the 20 minute thing. So I got my phone and made sure to turn on the timer for 20 minutes and basically stay focused on a task and be present with that task for the most part. Um, it, it's challenging, especially in the beginning, but I will tell you guys that doing that all last week, I felt so much more energy inside. Yeah, I was able to make it through my day uh, without you know, having to do a ton of coffee or anything like that. Um, I was able to stay focused on the tasks and actually felt like I had time to do more things, right? Because I focused on there. I wasn't wasting time switching between things. I even was uh, made it so I could read my book every morning, which I've been having a hard time trying to sit down and do. 
but I've been able to do it now and actually haven't been able to put it down because I've been doing this little routine. So it really does help when you can stay focused and when you can put in those boundaries, uh, which is why um, I don't know about for you, Trisha, but for me, I, I've always set biz office hours. Um, I may break them, but it, it's up to me if I want to do that. But I set office hours publicly so that I already have those boundaries that I tell myself and that my clients know, okay, for the most part, this is, this is when Ed's going to be available. And, and if not, that's outside of his office hours, you know, unless it's emergency, like it's just, it's setting those boundaries. And that I've found in my business has really helped both myself and my clients as well. Yes. One of the things notorious empaths are people pleasers. They're <laughs> always people pleasers it's to the detriment of ourselves. Like it, and that is one of the things that I absolutely go over with my clients. Like you have to create those boundaries. You cannot allow my clients to have clients who say, I have an emergency here. You are, yeah. you know, I've had clients where they're like, oh, I, I'm so exhausted because yes, I have this project, but now I'm also, they're sending me emails that God, ungodly hours or the weekends or, and what happens is they've allowed it exactly. and now they've gotten their clients used to it. So yeah. now it's a matter of breaking that and creating those times where I'm available here. This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. This is what needs to be done. And not allowing somebody, unless of course it's an emergency, there's an exception to every rule, but by really having those boundaries and sticking to it. Same thing with your family and friends, because as business owners, they're like, oh, well, she's not really working. And it's like, wait a second, <laughs> because I'm not at a nine to five job. It's okay to come and barge in. And it's important too. That's something I have my clients do is set those times. And it's very similar to that 20 minutes. It's saying, well, this hour I'm doing this. You cannot open that door until let's say three o'clock. Yeah. So it's and, and that. that's important too. You know, I, I, I love that uh, Marilyn just brought up the friends uh, family part too, because for, for me, I've even gotten in the habit of if it's friends and family, um, or friends of family members and stuff. Uh, I still give out my business number because that's business when they're trying to contact me. I rarely give out my personal number because I, that's personal, right? Like I really try to keep the separation between personal and business because I am a people pleaser. I do want to make sure things get checked off the list as quickly as possible, both for my clients as well as for myself. And I can get in those loops where it's like, oh, just one more thing, just one more thing. And then you realize that one more thing has left you, you know, days and days of not working overtime and all that stuff. And it's like, you really do have to recharge. So it's really important to set those boundaries, not only for clients, but our friends and our family and, and to let them know, like, you know, this, this is how it is, even though you're not at a nine to five, like you said, we still have to have boundaries, even if it, the space, the environment looks different. Yes, exactly. And I just recently spoke to somebody who said to me, I have client after client after client. And when I'm done, I'm exhausted. Of course you are. There is no time in between clients. There is no grounding. I mean, I am a great, I'm for an empath. It's so important for us to be outside and grounding. And grounding can be so many things. It can be if your weather is warm, you can go outside and spend five minutes with your feet in the grass. If, you know, if it's in cold weather, one of the things I did that's on my desk is I created a little grounding ball. It's beach sand with some stuff in here that I just kind of play with, you know, put my hands in and ground. And Things like uh, creating a visualization for yourself to ground yourself or, and, and one of my clients says, I can't do that. So I said, okay, go on to YouTube. She goes, I love listening to the ocean. I says, go on to the YouTube, pick up a, a, a video of the ocean and just listen to it for five minutes. Ooh. It's yes. 
quick and easy. I'm all about quick and easy and getting yourself centered and grounded. And it's, it's important. It's great for all of us to be outside and grounding our energy. But again, with empaths, with everything that they pick up constantly, it's important to let that go. Yeah. So if they're taking client after client after client, and I did it, and I would, yeah. I would be like, I'm exhausted. And I want to now either cancel the next client right. or take tomorrow off or, you know, give myself a breather. And what I had to learn is honoring myself. And that meant, all right, I have a client at 10. My next client's at 12. Yes. I'm giving myself that time in between. Yes. Oh, so all of you watching both live and on the replay, please note that part that's so important. Giving yourself enough time because Here's the thing, you know, I, oh, in, um, when I'm working with my clients, I always have this um, time audit that we go through for, for big projects like the business gone live. And I work on the time audit because it's so important for us to understand where we can find the time because obviously we never have enough time to do what we want to do or need to do. So we, we work on that. And part of that uh, exercise is making sure that you block time out in 30 minute increments. Most people do 10 or 15, right? They're like, oh, I have a, I have an 11 o'clock and I can do, you know, 11, 15 or 11, 20. And it's like, no, you have to give yourself at least 30 minutes in between. So that way you can um, pay attention to if timing is off. Like if something comes up, if you have to travel, uh, you know, there, there's a, you're stuck at the red light, like whatever it is, there's so many things that come up. And so that helps give you that extra 15 minute buffer because you wanted 15, but then you also have to factor in another 15 minute buffer to help support that, to keep you going. So I love that you, you extended it even further with that because it's so important because we do need to have that, that time to just basically debrief and, and really, like you said, get grounded again before we jump into the next thing. Yeah. It's so one of my clients, what I did was not only did I have her extend it, I also had her create rituals in between each client. So oh. like, depending on what your business is, like this client, they, she did a lot of um, healing and, you know, the people coming to her had issues. Yeah. So, so you need to create a little ritual in between each client so that you can clear that energy. Yeah. You can recharge your batteries. And if you're hungry, you can eat. Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, you eat little things that you don't realize during the day, getting yourself something to drink, being able to, to eat, you yeah. know, and a simple thing that I, I talk to my clients with is if you cut yourself short and you don't have a whole lot of time, water is a great cleanser. Yes. Drinking it. Yeah. I also have <laughs> over here. <laughs> drinking it, washing your hands with the intention of letting go of everything that you may have picked up from that person. Oh. Yes. And you could do it in a fun way, you know. I mean, I've told I've told people, get a pretty soap or have a little dance or <laughs> you yeah. know, sing a little song to yourself. And you're getting your body moving. You're washing. You're washing your hands, and you're cleansing that energy that you're pick that you've picked up. Because empaths will pick up their clients' emotions and their clients' challenges and the obstacles during that call. Sure. And if they know it, which is great, they'll be able to clear it much quicker. Yeah. No, I love that. I don't know about you guys, but now I really want to do a fun. Uh, bathroom, washing my hands, like video for you guys. Cause you know, I, I love video. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm already playing in my head. Like I got some good music going. I'm washing the hands and it's like my new thing before I jump on a live broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's true. The music, music yeah. is great because it raises your vibration yeah. and it gets you in a better frame of mind. So let's say you just had a really rough call and that the call just did not go your way. And it's like, oh my God, I have so much to do. And it's like, put some music on, do a little dance, <laughs> yeah. get that energy moving, get that, that because ener emotions are energy in motion. 
And what happens is if we take it on, we're taking it into our bodies and we're not letting it flow. And when we don't let it flow, it becomes stagnant and it can become stagnant to such a point that you can actually manifest an illness down the road if you can continue to do that. Yes, been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's that's the thing. I will say from hearing from what you're saying and, and things that I've been reading lately um, and, and a couple speak uh, speaking things that I've gone to, it's so fascinating to me because um, energy is so important. And I know like we hear that or, or we think we've heard that, but what I've really come to find is that we're so obsessed with time and trying to get so much more time in our day. If we just had one more hour to do X, Y, Z, but that's still just like a top layer. If we really go deeper, it comes back to the energy because if we have all the time in the world, but no energy to do anything, uh -huh. what's the time worth? Nothing, right? Because we can't, we don't feel like doing anything. So we're just wasting it. So for me, when I, when I realized that through these different conversations, I just, I, it's like a whole new shift in, in my mindset of like, uh -huh. wow, it really does come down to our energy and how are we managing our energy? Because that is actually what makes us more effective, more productive, and can take our business to the next level because we're able to manage it versus trying to just get one more hour in our day. Yes. And I'm going to add on that. Please. Because uh, one of the things that I love to do is not only do we have to deal with the energy, it's, it's, you know, it's everywhere around us. But the other thing that we need to, to start looking at is newness, is going outside of our comfort zone and dealing with the video and the other things for us to be more visible to our clients. And when we are stuck in a rut, our neural pathways are old, they're like ruts in our mind. And we just keep doing the same things over and over again. And what we need to start doing is outside the box thinking, being more visible, um, getting out there, meeting new people. And sometimes this, this can be hard for empaths and people say, go to networking events. So don't go to a networking event if you're not comfortable, but get right. online meet new people online that way and or get involved in a referral group online or you know i i actually have a couple of networking things online and it's great and sometimes just reaching out to somebody and said hey look we're very similar i'd love to introduce myself and get to know you a little bit more and if nothing else become friends but this is again outside the box thinking this is creating those those new neural pathways and your brain starts to look for other ways for you to be outside the box. I love that. Yes, that is what we need to do for those watching the replay as well. Um, and maybe some of you are just listening to the broadcast, which is great. Um, I put in the chat and I want you to think about this. How are you going to be more visible for your clients this year? Uh -huh. How are you going to be more visible for your prospects? Like, you, you don't know who's out there paying attention to you and who's craving more information from you because you just don't know. We never know, even, even when we're on all the time, we still don't know all the people that are out there waiting and what they're, how much they really want from us, right? Unless they actually reach out. So how are you going to be more visible to your clients and your prospects this year? Because again, we've brought it up a few times video is huge and and it's not going anywhere there's lo lots of statistics out there you can google it you can message me i'll send you some um, but there's lots of stats out there around video and more specifically live broadcasting which is why i love this stuff um, because it's right at our fingertips and you can see that all the networks are picking it up in terms of facebook instagram linkedin now even has it they're still in beta so fyi but they have it. Um, you have your Periscope, which is tied into your Twitter. You know, you have all of these places, um, even TikTok, you guys. TikTok 
which is the new hottest app, right? They even have live streaming. Like that's just become the thing now. So you have to understand that it, it's not just something that ah, maybe I'll do it. it. It's something that you should be doing and it should be part of your marketing plan. Even if you don't have a marketing plan, this make this your marketing plan. Yeah. So if, if nothing else for empaths, I, I, I want them to understand they need to honor themselves. They need, if they want to have a bigger, they have a big vision. They want to be out there even more helping people. Then you need to, you need to start putting these little rituals, these little things into place, giving yourself, but at the same time, being able to get online and meet people. And you may not have to do it the traditional way because that's some of the, that's one of the things that I did. I'm like, oh, I've got to do it this way. It must look that way. And we go through that period of, well, this group guru said this, or this said this. And I was like, I oh, know I'm going to, I'm going to, I need to be more intentional about going live. It's not even about being intentional. It's about going online and just sharing a message. Like today I went online to talk about the, the physical aspect of being an empath. Take something and do it for three minutes or five minutes. Don't make it so long that people don't want to watch. Yes. Just make it little bite size things. And then you do it. I did it on my fan page. I went live again on my Facebook page and then I forwarded it into um, Instagram TV. Yes. So, you know, it, just start talking, just start sharing your message because the only way to be more visible is to really get out there and, and do these things. And, and let's say you could take a topic that you're really excited about and break it down into tiny bite-sized pieces and then get on the video, create posts on social media that have call to actions. And at the same time, get on live and people see your face and they see your they see your energy. Yes. They see what you're like. They see that vibe. I mean, there have been people that I'm like they're they they've been recommended. I'm like, you're like, oh, listen to this one for, for uh this or whatever. And I remember watching them being like, oh no, and backing away. And that that is what I use. I use video a lot when I'm looking to deal with people. Yeah. It, it's so important. And, and what you just said is crucial. And I'm so glad people can hear it from someone else too, is that again, that you get to see, feel that energy and, and understand that person. You, you know, you guys who, who follow me, you get to see my goofiness all the time on here. For those who are new, you get to see how goofy I get, how lit up I get with this stuff. You know, it's like, it's just so much fun. And it, it's, again, it's just taking something and breaking it down and just starting like that. That's the biggest thing. And so I want to challenge you guys because we covered a lot here and, and we'll, we'll wrap it up here in just a second. But for those of you uh, watching, even in the replay, I want you to um, not only watch this again, because we covered a lot, but I want you to challenge yourself to figure out what's one thing you're going to implement today from this live, you know, whether that is, starting to find your symbol, uh, going through creating a, a ritual um, uh, with like getting grounded, um, or is it going to be showing up more online? Uh, is it gonna be doing more live broadcasting? Is it going to be um, putting office hours? It's like we covered a lot here. I just want you to pick one and implement it because if you don't, then, then you just basically wasted your time, right? I mean, not really because you learned a lot, but I want you to implement because that's the biggest thing. We're so passive in our learning experience online that I want to empower you to just pick one thing and tell us down below, even if you're watching the replay, what it is. So then that way you're putting it out there in the universe. You're saying, this is what I'm doing. And then that way you can just do it. Yeah. That's my challenge to you guys. <laughs> and I would, and I'm going to add on to that. Yeah. I want you to do that challenge and whatever fear comes up or self-talk that comes up that tells you, you can't do it. I want you to challenge that voice yes. and say, is this really the truth? 
And if you can switch it around and change it to something empowering and start saying that to yourself instead to get you ready to go. And quite frankly, the only way to get rid of that voice is to do it. It's It's true. Is to do it. Yeah, it's so true. Um, did, did you want to cover anything else? Did we catch everything that we wanted to talk about on this episode? Sure. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. All right. Um, so I will, uh, you guys can see in the description, uh, a link to Trisha's websites. Feel free to, um, tag her in the comments below. If you like follow her on Facebook, uh, check out her website. She's amazing. As you can tell, uh, any, any last words that you want to share before I let you go? Uh, I would love to hear about everybody who's implemented something and participated in this challenge because I want to be there for you as well to say, yes, do it, do it. Be more intentional in in what you want to do and how you want to say it. But when you get on video and you get on live, just be yourself because that is what attracts people is truly letting your own personality shine through, through the camera. So true. It's so true. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us, Trisha, today. And I will see you online here after this message. (laughs) I don't know, you guys. I just made that part up, the message part. (laughs) But thank you, Trisha, for having uh, being on the show. And I will see you later on. Thank you, Ed. Take care. Bye. All right, guys. So that is the show. How awesome is that? And see, I mess up even at the at the end there too. It's all good. You just got to show up, show up, deliver, and engage. Look at that. That pointing action was perfect. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Like I said, you have all of the information you need in the description. And if you need anything else, just, just send me a message. You know where I'm at. And I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And I will talk to you guys later. Take care.